Welcome to MMA FanCast. My name's Luke, and I am honored to have first-time guest of the show, Monte Barnes. Welcome to the show, Monte. Hey, I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? It's great having you on the show. I know you said you wanted to do this interview from the Gorilla House gym, which is your home gym, and that's where the magic happens. So let's get into that first. What magic happens at the Gorilla House gym? How did you find them? What's it like training with the just defended 247 world champion at 145 pounds pro male champ, uh, Ethan Wolverine Goss. What's it like training at Gorilla House Gym and how's it been going? Um, it's honestly amazing. Um, Ethan has been a blessing to me. Um, you know, just getting into fighting, like being mentored by, you know, one of the best out there has just made it, um, you know, it's just made it awesome. Um, you know, it's, it's just uh, being able to watch someone, you know, that good every single day, train with someone that good every single day, as I feel like, you know, brought the best out of me. And, um, you know, I don't want to say made it easy to learn. You know, this is definitely a tough sport. But, you know, being mentored by someone that good, you know, I'm picking up new stuff every day. I'm learning. Um, you know, I've come a long way from where I started. Um, you know, and that's – has a lot, you know, I have to thank Ethan a lot for that because, you know, it's, uh, I don't have to go anywhere crazy to get, you know, like some of the best looks. I mean, like, I don't have to travel far at all. Like I'm right at home and, you know, um, my hometown. So, um, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, I, um, recently, you know, went to some other gyms, you know, to try and test myself. And I feel like, um, I mean, so far, like, <laughs> It's honestly like, you know, it's it's harder here, you know, than it is anywhere else. And then I went, you know, whenever I go to those other places, like I feel comfortable. Um, so, you know, because I got, you know, we got him, we got Cam, Cam Allgaier. Um, Cam, you know, helped me a lot from the beginning. I'm, a, uh, you know, I was, I'm a wrestler, but um, obviously, you know, wrestling in MMA is a lot different than, um, you know, it is in um, regular wrestling. So Cam was honestly one of the first people to help me out with that, you know, transition my, uh, you know, regular wrestling into uh, MMA wrestling. And, um, you know, I learned a lot watching Sid. You know, Dan is amazing to work with. Like Dan, honestly, <laughs> Dan honestly, like just made, you know, a lot of improvements. Like, he was, he was gone for a little bit, but he just came back and, you know, stuff Ray or Darren can't get me to do. You know, Dan gets me to do. Um, he helped me and get something, like, really great yesterday. I don't want to uh, really, like, put it out there because, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, let people know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm excited to do it. Um, I got to thank uh, – I'm wearing – wearing my Sheldon, Sheldon Nyhoff shirt right now. He uh, gave me one before he left. Like, I helped him move. But um, honestly, like, you know, Sheldon's helped me get to where I'm at a lot now because, um, you know, that was uh, my main training partner. And I'd, I'd say, uh, you know, he kind of had the toughest job because, you know, when the coaches can't get me to do something, he's the one that has to sit there with me, you know, while I'm messing it up and keep going and, you know, teach me how to do stuff. Like, he um taught me how to, you know, turn kicks over. Like, uh, it's weird because I did, you know, I grew up doing Taekwondo and then um then coming in here and, like, seeing all, oh, you know, all that stuff really doesn't work. And, um, you know, he taught me how to turn kicks over properly. You know, I know how to kick now. Um, it's uh, he uh, he Sheldon like throws a lot of like weird punches, like from different angles and stuff like that. So um, you know, that taught me how to see, you know, like see weird punches. Like I don't really feel like anybody's gonna throw a weird punch at me that I haven't seen before because you know I'm used to dealing with it with him all the time. I he throw like he can throw from a bunch of weird angles. So he, um, you know, helped me with that a lot. Um, but they, they've all helped me so much, you know, since, um, since after my first fight, I feel like that's whenever, um, 
you know, we really started training like heavily because I, um, you know, I started off with Ray and all of them. Um, I was just kind of in here, you know, just working out. And um, then, uh, you know, one of my friends, his name's Sean, he, uh, you know, started telling me about the jiu-jitsu class and I got into it. And, um, you know, then one day Ray just came up to me and he was just like, oh, he's like, I see you can wrestle. And then, you know, I told him, you know, I wrestled in college and everything. And um, he asked me to, you know, go wrestle them to help them, you know, get ready for their fights. <laughs> and um, the first person I went with was Sid. And um, that was like the first time, you know, I ever, I've never like, you know, hit a girl, like, but, um, that was the first time I ever had to go against a girl, and, um, I still didn't really want to hit her, but, like, she's kind of a beast, and, um, uh, I just remember, you know, Ray and, uh, Darren were just like, all right, Monte Sid, like, let's go, and I was, like, kind of nervous, because I was like, hey, you want me to, you know, go hit her, and then she just came out of nowhere and cracked me, like, I wasn't wearing a mouthpiece, and, um, that was the fastest double leg I've ever hit in my life. <laughs> and then um, after that, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm wearing mouthpiece. And um, yeah, that was um, that was my first experience sparring. You know, not, you know, I sparred the rest of the guys. And um, basically just off of heart, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was kind of getting beat up. And, um, you know, just going for takedowns when I could. Um, you know, I tried, tried my best, you know, like hit them back. Um, I thought I had hands, but I was like, okay, yeah, I don't have hands yet. Um, and then, uh, you know, after that, he was kind of just like, you, he was like, you want to fight? And I was like, sure, like, I'll give it a try. And, um, you know, I've always wanted to do UFC. Um, I say UFC, I mean to say MMA, but you know what I mean? But um, I was always watching it. I started watching it probably in ninth grade. Like, I would stay up. Um, and we had, uh, I think we had direct TV, and there would just be stuff on FS1 late at night. And I used to stay up, like, every single night until probably, like, I think they had, like, the like the free fights on at, like, 2 or 3 in the morning. And I will just sit up and watch them. And I always kind of fantasized about doing it one day. And, um Whenever I met them, you know, I mean, I kind of, uh, you know, wrestling didn't go as planned in college just because, you know, some personal stuff. But, um, you know, I had to uh, kind of, like, I was in and out. It's like once you're a wrestler, you're always going to be a wrestler. Like, I still always went in, you know, whenever guys were cutting weight and drill with them. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, like, I, I would be like, you know, in there for the, for the beginning of the year and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, I was, I was taking pre-med, so, you know, the books are really expensive and it just always kind of got to a point where, um, you know, I had to focus on work and, um, you know, kind of give it up because I was like, it was really hard, but, you know, to give that up, you know, that was like kind of one of my dreams, but, you know, it gets to a point where you have to be realistic. And I was like, you know, realistically, there's not really too much you can do with wrestling after college. So it was a, you know, tough decision to make. Um, kind of, uh, you know, I was kind of lost for a little bit, you know, that's because that's what I did. You know, I competed, I did sports. Um, and, uh, you know, then I came home. It was, um, I actually like had a real bad injury. Like I don't, I don't really like, talk about too much. But, um, you know, I had to deal with that. It took probably a good two, three years, you know, for me to recover from that. And then, you know, I was in here and, um, you know, I, I just said to uh, Dan, like, before he left, like, I just kind of feel like it was meant for all of us to meet, you know. And um, then whenever Ray, you know, asked me to go ahead and fight, like, I was like, all right, like, here's my opportunity to, like, it just kind of came out of nowhere. I was like, here's my opportunity to get into this. And I didn't even realize, like, how good they were. Like, they're, um, like, that's, that, that's what's nuts. Like, um, I was just saying, 
because, you know, they just shark tank me. Like, I feel like, uh, you know, our shark tanks are getting harder and harder because, like, this group of guys, like, everybody just keeps getting better. So, guys and a girl, I mean to say, but everybody just keeps getting better. So, um, you know, we push each other. And uh, yesterday was uh, – you know, was that? It wasn't yesterday. It was the day before. But it was, um, you know, a good day. Darren, uh, Darren kind of came at me really, really hard, which I appreciated because, um, yeah, there's, um, I mean, with fighting, like, honestly, like, there's a lot, a lot of people that, you know, try to get in your ear and stuff like that, and I've had, you know, people try to say, which I didn't believe, you know, I think it's baloney, but, um, you know, people try to say, like, you know, they didn't have my best interest at heart and stuff like that, but I don't believe that, I believe that they do, because if not, you know, they wouldn't have made me take the time that I just took. And then Darren, like, I saw a whole other side of Darren. Like, Darren was like, like, he looked at me before my first round. He's like, you need to get all out this round. And he was telling everybody, like, come come at me because he wanted to know that I can defend myself, you know. And I, I appreciate that because, obviously, I got knocked out in my first fight because, you know, I didn't, didn't know defense, didn't really – um. It's like I knew it, you know, like they like I went to a really good boxing gym. Like I go to uh, scorching boxing. I haven't really been there, you know, the last six months because um because it just, you know, it just gets to a point like you gotta you gotta focus on MMA. Like and you know, there's a lot of stuff, you know, that you do in boxing that you can't do in MMA, like, you know, rolling, like I can't roll so much because you know there's kicks and you know, knees and all that stuff and just other stuff you can get caught with. So I had to make that full, you know, transition to MMA. But, um, yeah, I'd like, you know, I went, I was at Scorching for probably like, you know, a good three months because, um, you know, I was changing jobs and stuff. And Ray was like, uh, well, honestly, Brad Mountain um, kind of, uh, like whenever I came in, his uh, he was doing his comeback fight. And, you know, he noticed that I was good at wrestling and kind of took to me and started mentoring me and stuff. And he took me to a gym in Virginia. It's called Kaizen. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, guys, guys, you know, fighting in the UFC and guys fighting in Bellator there in and out of there. And uh, he took me there and I got beat up a little bit. You know what I mean? I hope my own, but um, still got beat up. Uh, because, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know how to check kicks. I didn't really know how to do anything. Like I was just, you know, I was just fighting off heart. And um, the coach down there told me, he was like, all you need to do, he's like, is just focus on boxing. He's like, everything else will come together. I do feel like, you know, and in MMA, sometimes like a lot of guys don't really focus on their boxing enough. And, um, you know, he, um, he just told me that's all, that's really all you need to focus on. And, you know, get a set of hands. So then I went to scorching. And, um, you know, the guy that taught me, his name is Spoon. Um, he's, uh, he's a real good boxing coach. And, you know, he taught me everything about boxing, you know, how to move, um, you know, how to defend myself, all that stuff. But it was still, um, you know, then, then I came right back to the grill house. Uh, you know, after I was done, I was doing private lessons and stuff with him and, you know, kind of getting in there sparring with those guys a little bit. And um, then I came back and they were like, all right, like, we got you a fight. Like, and I was like, okay. Like, and, um, you know, I was, I was ready to go. And, um, you know, I just realized like, like boxing and, you know, I'm a man and everything. It takes time. Like I didn't, so I knew everything, but it's like, it wasn't muscle memory, you know, all that good stuff. Um, I honestly, like, I didn't know my range. Like, I didn't know how to take angles. Like, I knew footwork, but I didn't know how to use it, when to use it, you know, all that good stuff. So, um, I mean, it was a good um, – I think it was a good fight, you know, just to see where I was at. And, um, you know, I learned I learned a lot from that fight. Like, um, it's like I'm kind of a nice guy, you know what I mean? Like, I was – um. I was, I've been in contact sports a lot of time for a long time, but, you know, I was always, um, abnormally strong for my size. 
So I'm always like, I don't, I ain't like hurting people. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just get them just enough, you know, that I win. But then, you know, I learned like, you know, there's gonna, you know, there's gonna be guys where it's like, you have to have that, you all flip that switch and, um, you know, kind of go into kill mode. And that's, um, you know, that's what I know how to do now. Uh, so I expect that in the fight. Like, I'm, I'm very humbled, you know, because, I mean, honestly, like, um, yeah, I'm not like, you know, I wasn't like a bad guy or anything, but, you know, I grew up kind of in, um, you know, more tough spot. Like, I've had to, you know, defend myself. Um, you know, if I feel like, you know, someone's really trying to hurt me, like, then, okay, like, I don't really, like, I don't really care then, but I had to kind of learn how to, I learned it more in football and in wrestling. Like, it's like, okay, like, you know, we can still be friends and stuff after, but there's, you know, times where it's just like, you know, you got to kill or be killed. But I had not, um, not making excuses, but, you know, I was, I was, uh, didn't compete for like seven years in anything. So I kind of forgot that mentality, but, um, I got that back. Um, they, uh, like, like you, Whenever we did the Shark Tank, I was like, like when we were at Ethan's fight, honestly, Dan was like, Monte, I need you to do me a favor. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, because I need you to just be mean as possible to me. And I was just like, all right. Like, and that's what we did. And, um, you know, uh, I think, um, I mean, the results, you know, were really good. Like, the, I've learned how to, you know, pick apart punches, see punches, pick my shots, all that good stuff. And. The left hand lands like I know how to make that land now, and um, I also um, uh, you know I know how to follow up with it now. It's like I felt like in my first fight, I mean, whenever I landed something, I got excited. I was like, oh my god, like I just you know. And then like it's like weird, like it's kind of weird fighting someone that didn't do anything to you. Like he was a nice guy, you know what I mean? And um, you know, like, I got like I hit him, I was like, oh god, like you know, I kind of just. Mm. But I've learned how to not care, like if that, you know, if that, um, if that makes sense. Like now, I don't, I don't really care. I'm like, you know, we both, we both signed up for this. We know what we're doing. Um, you know, so I have to get past that. And um, yeah, I'm just excited to, you know, like put that on display here. Um, I feel like you know things. Things, you know, will go my way because, you know, just because of who who I train with, like what they just molded me into. Um, it's um, it's like I had to, like I like to work out, but I had to, you know, I was doing CrossFit and all that stuff, but I was just talking to Darren about that. I had to, you know, remember how I got good at things in the past. Like I didn't, um, you know, we just did it for fun, like all like sports. I did them for fun um you know running around the street that's what we did all day so now it's like whenever I come in and train um I do this um I don't want to say it's like it's like a teens class like people from like 16 up to like 20 so like you know I come in and that's just my time to just um I mean it's it's a hard workout don't get me wrong like it's abs every five seconds sparring bad work but um you know I like going with them and just focusing on mechanics and then um you know then whenever I come after that you know to our next practice you know the real fighter practice I'm already kind of tired and drained and then um you know it um then I really have to focus on technique and you know keeping everything crisp and you know correct because if not like those guys are gonna get me, like Ethan's gonna get me, Cam's gonna get me, Dan's gonna get me. So um, you know, it's been nice doing that. Um, yeah, you know, like it's still like it's conditioning, but conditioning through the sport, I think that's you know very important because um, you know, if you're just if I like before I was just kind of just conditioning, killing myself and then trying to go with those guys after that. And I realized like, you know, I don't have the muscle memory and all that stuff to do that yet. And I was developing bad habits, you know, because whenever you're tired, you just do dumb stuff. But um, so I think it was really good for me to 
just focus on the sport itself, which is kind of hard for me because um, I like to go, like I like to work out, like, you know, I, um, but I mean, I'm seeing fighting, like, you know, I mean, that is a workout. Like it took me a long time to understand that too. Like you're still conditioned through that. It's definitely, you know, one of the hardest sports I've done physically. Um, you know, I'm the leanest I've ever been in my life. Um, you know, my wind, my wind is really good. Um, and then, uh, you know, just going with Dan because he's like, he's got like good 80 pounds on me. Like that's my lifting. Um, so it's just, uh, it's been good. Like I had to reset my mind kind of, you know, I, felt, I think it's, it's really good that I, I took a loss first, you know, um, cause I'm not, uh, I'm not really like that, that used to losing, like, I mean, in football, like I was used to it because, um, yeah, I played in like a really tough league. I played in the whippy old and, um, you know, I was very dominant in the whippy old, but like I'm a team player. So like, I didn't really care. Like if I scored three touchdowns, I'm like, we lost, like, yeah, so, um, that was really like only where I lost, like what, what I liked about doing individual sports is, you know, I'm like, it's on me at the end of the day. Like, I don't have to worry about, oh, hey, someone else messed this up. So now, you know, we're, we're all, you know, we all lost. Now it's just I can dictate, you know, what happens. It's all on me. And, um, you know, I enjoy that. Um, just being able to feel like I have, you know, more control over what the outcome is going to be. And, um, you know, I was very, uh, I'm like very blessed to have, you know, I mean, everyone here, but, you know, Ray and Darren, I feel like, uh, you know, because I got into wrestling really late, but, like, I just, for some reason, like, I just, I was really good at it. I went really far in wrestling, but there's still, um, like, the stuff they're showing me now, I'm like, oh, if I would have, you know, they would have been on me about this before, or someone would have showed me this before, like, then, you know, I would, I would have been at that elite level of wrestling, like, regardless of, you know, me starting late, but, um, you know, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm there now, you know, we're slowly approaching, we're getting there, um, just because, you know, I have them, and, um, it's also nice, you know, it's, um, I've never really, I don't, like, I've never had, no, no matter what team I've been a part of, I've never had, like, the attention that you get here, like, it's like, everything is 10 times harder because it's like Ray and Darren, like they only got to watch a couple of people. They're watching everything that we do. So like, if you mess up, like, it's like, boom, they're going to call you right out. And like, and it's, uh, I don't want to say, uh, like, it's not, it's not frustrating. Like, it's kind of like, um, to me, it's like a breath of fresh air because I'm like, they're really making sure that I'm doing what I need to do. Like there's lots of, uh, lots of stuff I'm finding like with my, you know, with my wrestling, I'm like, no one really ever called me out on before. Sure. And I think that's because I was always in, you know, giant gyms. Like, I, I mean, I really, I really learned how to wrestle. Um, not so much at Altoona. Like, you know, I learned all the basics from them. Uh, Joel Gilbert was my wrestling coach. He's, you know, taught, he taught me a lot. Like he taught me, like the biggest thing he taught me was defense. Like, um, and you know, it's because I was late in the sport, but you know, he basically taught me, you know, if I can, you know, defend myself, I can keep myself in any single match. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that I beat that I had no business beating just because, you know, my defense was that good. Like, honestly, like guys, guys really get tired of shooting on me. Like, that's how I beat everybody. Like, I'm like, all right, come on, you can shoot. And after they shoot about two or three times, I'll stuff all the takedowns, you know, then I'll go for a go behind and, you know, pretty much always had success with that. Well, that so. ties in nicely to MMA as well, learning to, to be defensive and then go on the offense when you've tired your opponent out. Right. I appreciate, Monte, you've given us a great rundown today, going back to your first fight, which you explained kind of the loss, how you've regrouped. You gave an incredibly deep understanding of what Gorilla House 
Jim means to you, the two coaches. Uh, I think you've run down every sparring partner, training partner. You've done a great job. And one thing we do want to mention as we wrap up is this is all regarding 247 Fighting Championships Brawl on the Bird 14, which is a little over two weeks away, October 22nd. You'll get to see Monte and a bunch of other people too at the Meadows Casino, the Hollywood Casino at the Meadows, just outside of Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. Monte, it's been incredible. Thanks for kind of running us through your athletic background before MMA, how you got in MMA, and all the things you've been picking up. I can't wait to interview you after the fight to kind of see how it all comes together. Thanks so much. You've been listening to Luke Basin on MMA Fancast with Monte Barnes. Thanks so much, Monte. Hey, I appreciate you, Luke. I'll see you at the fight. Can't wait to see you there. Have a good one. Awesome. You take it easy. Thank you for having me. You got it. All right.